Welcome, market participants, to another Three Things in Credit. I'm Van Hesser, Chief Strategist at KBRA. Each week, we bring you three things impacting credit markets that we think you should know about. I took note of one market prognosticator this week commenting that there is a, quote, buyer's strike in credit markets, unquote. That, of course, is not true, as markets clearly remain open. Some of the fall-off in issuance in some markets, such as leveraged finance, reflect changing market conditions, which remind me of a time-worn adage that has held up well. There are no bad bonds, just bad bond prices. This week, our three things are, one, commodity price plunge. Narrative around much talked about supply is shifting. Two, consumer staples. After a period of heightened event risk, the sector's defensive nature is conveniently returning. And three, the Texas Manufacturing Survey. Activity in the Lone Star State has fallen dramatically. All right, let's dig a bit deeper. We mentioned last week how the Bloomberg Commodity Spot Index was hooking over. And just to freshen that up, the BCOM is 14% off of its June 7th all-time high. Now, we care about commodities because it reflects what we are confronting economically today, supply chain inefficiencies and inflation, and what we will confront in the future, a global growth slowdown. So the hook down in the BCOM marked an end to the demand exceeding supply story and an acceleration of the economic deceleration story. Consider some of the price moves of individual commodities. Lumber. Remember the spike in lumber? Well, it's 57% off of its recent high. Steel, down 42%. Aluminum, down 36%. Wheat, down 35%. Cotton, down 35%. Natural gas, down 28%. Copper, down 24%. Oil, down 10%. You get the picture. Commodity stocks tell a similar story. The iShares Global Materials ETF is 20% off of its recent high, as is the iShares MSCI Global Agriculture Producers ETF. iShares Global Energy ETF is off 18%. The Baltic Exchange Dry Index is down 59% from its recent peak. This feels like more than a correction. Granted, some of this drop-off is from spikes driven by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the disruption that had on that particular commodity superstore, especially in wheat and energy. However, we believe the price pressure we are now seeing increasingly reflects the prospects for economic slowdown. In other words, the sell-off in commodities fits into that emerging narrative that investor concern is shifting from an inflation shock to a growth shock. All of this suggests that cyclicals here are more vulnerable to credit deterioration than staples. All right, on to our second thing. Consumer staples livens up. There was a time when consumer staples was a sleepy sector. Stable earnings and cash flows, the quintessential safe haven. Well, it's all changed, of course, as those cash flows became less stable, ironically, as managers figured out they could carry a higher debt load. These firms have also been vulnerable to changing consumer preferences, as many of the old brand mainstays found themselves out of favor to consumers that had become far more conscious of exactly what they were ingesting. And execution risk of creating additional value out of legacy brands has proven to be challenging. To investors, all of these moving pieces presented its own challenges, the most recent example being Venerable Kellogg, one of the original plant-based well-being companies, which is how it describes itself these days which is spinning off its cereal and part of its plant-based food units. With food security and recession durability becoming important investing themes, consumer staples have come back into vogue. The sector's stocks have outperformed the broader market significantly in 2022, as uncertainty, more broadly, has increased. While these names tend not to be the safe havens they used to be when they were all single or double-A rated, Investors have taken comfort in their defensive nature, especially in the face of increasing risk of recession, notwithstanding ratings that have typically come down into triple B land. 
Moreover, even event risk may be lower than what has been the case as the radical restructurings of the past where Kraft Heinz's split from Mondelez was Exhibit A. The Kellogg transaction, which sounds dramatic, really isn't, with 87% of the company's EBITDA staying with the legacy company, supporting a yet-to-be-determined amount of the debt, some of which is expected to end up with the cereal business. The surviving company's CEO, who will head up what's being called the Global Snacking Company, has committed publicly to maintaining its investment-grade rating, which he believes preserves good financial flexibility, including access to commercial paper. After more than a few tumultuous years in the consumer staples sector, its durability and credit is emerging once again. All right, on to our third thing, a Texas shock. Now, there is no shortage of regional Fed economic outlooks, but I have to admit the latest one out of the Dallas Fed caught my eye. This week, the Texas Manufacturing Outlook Survey suggests not all is well in the great state of Texas. The survey missed badly, reading minus 17.7 versus an estimate of minus 6.5, its worst reading since the onset of the pandemic. Growth in Texas factory activity decelerated sharply in June, according to the report, with new orders showing a decline in demand. Capacity utilization and shipments fell markedly, and perceptions of broader business conditions worsened. The future here looks bleak and the speed of the shift in sentiment is breathtaking, suggesting an ill-timed ramp up in Q1, only to find demand hitting a wall. The view of general business activity six months ahead has swung from decidedly positive in February to decidedly negative in June. Only April of 2020 and the depths of the GFC have seen readings worse than June's. A similar story is the case at the individual company level as well. Now, one of the pillars of the economy relied upon by the Fed and investors is the labor market. And not surprisingly, given the results of this survey, employers are beginning to grow more cautious toward hiring. Same can be said for capital expenditures, which have hooked down both currently and in expectations six months out. All of this is consistent with our great deceleration theme, although I must say the speed at which manufacturing activity in one of the most vibrant operating environments caught us by surprise. Turnarounds of this magnitude tend to feed on itself something credit market participants and central bank officials need to keep track of, given that risk asset performance tends to correlate closely with manufacturing activity. So there you have it. Three things in credit. One, commodity price plunge. Here comes the growth shock. Two, consumer staples. After a period of heightened event risk, the sector's defensive nature is conveniently returning. And three, the Texas Manufacturing Survey. Turnarounds of this magnitude bear watching. As always, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check in on KBRA.com for our latest research and ratings reports. Enjoy the holiday weekend, and we'll see you next week.